Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn more about uh, modifiers and today's subject is the FFD modifier, freeform deformation modifier. I wanted to address this in a separate lesson because uh, th this tool uh, I use the most, I guess, the, this modifier uh, I use the most because it kind of contains uh, a lot of other modifiers. Uh, this, uh, as I told you, this is called freeform deformation. So it gives us a lot of uh, control. It gives us uh, a lot of flexibility. Uh, let me uh, dive in and show you uh, how it works. Now, this was the uh, sofa we have modeled together for the final uh, interior uh, example. I want to introduce a little bit more organicness to the um, to the sofa to the model. And now I realize that uh, the noises we have created here are a little bit random because uh, it, there's no reason there should be a, I guess, a outward bump in here. I don't know. Uh, but you need to think about this stuff. And uh, with FFT, we can introduce uh, bumps or indents or whatever uh, shape changes, let's say, generally uh, to anywhere you like. And this is how it works. If you open this uh, group go to group open and select this uh, these two uh, models which are the pillow and the uh, pipes uh, around and then apply an FFT modifier which is uh, which you can apply from here you can click and hit FF and you will see that uh, five uh, FFT modifiers will show up uh, for this example let's use uh, four by four by four uh, in short, I, I call it F54. So uh, when you apply this, you can see that instantly we have a lattice like this. And we can, I guess intuitively you can understand that we can play with these uh, control points. Maybe I can change the co uh, coloring or shading to clay so that you can see this a little bit better. While modeling clay, uh, view mode is uh, really helpful. I recommend you to switch between clay and shaded to understand the shape uh, better and how you can control or select these control points is you can go here and click on control points or the shortcut is one as we talked before uh, because uh, it's the first sub object mode in here so if I hit one uh, you can see that I'm uh, in the control points mode and I can just select click and select these control points let's say four of these and hit W to, for move and just move this up and down. And you can see that uh, it uh, manipulates a lot of vertices at once and it gives us a little bit control because uh, in other modifiers we did have a gizmo, a center and it, they did a rigid uh, thing like bend or uh, like wave for example. We didn't have that much control in it, but here we, we can select separate uh, points and behave them uh, or tell them to behave differently. Let's select two of these and pull these up. Maybe these two. Okay, you can see that we have a uh, puffiness to the, soft, uh, to the pillows now. And then we have a general uh, inward curve in here because it has been seated before, I guess. So if I look at this now, it, it feels more controlled. It feels more like a pillow, I guess. And let's uh, bring the puffiness up for these back chairs as well, again, uh, back uh, pillows as well, sorry. I can again uh, apply an FFT here. Ah, now, uh, a weird thing happened and uh, it's good that this happened because it will happen to you as well. And let me show you how to uh, fix this. Now, uh, the lattice is not aligned with the uh, pillow. The reason for this is uh, the pillow is rotated and it tries to apply the FFT uh, aligned to the world. So how you can change the al alignment of the lattice is you can go here again and go to set volume. If you do that, you can see that uh, three is the shortcut for this, by the way. If you do that, you can see that we can uh, select all these points and then we can just rotate them without affecting the uh, shape, as you can see, or you can move them around. Uh, you can even do, uh, play with individual control points. Let me show that to you as well. I'm selecting these, for example. 
and then I can just pull them. Uh, I can even go to local and uh, sorry, this uh, this pillow is not rotated, so I can just I have to do it in the world view, a uh, world alignment. So I guess this is good enough. Now if I go to control points and select these four points, it they will start to affect the shape of the pillow, as you can see. Okay, I can bring the mid sides up a little bit to introduce uh, a little bit of puffiness. Now, by the way, if you can't remember the previous shape, if you uh, can't remember how this affected our uh, pillow, you what you can do is you can just hide this from here and see the effect. As you can see, the mid sides are brought up a little bit. I know it's subtle, but subtlety is always the key for realism. Uh, you need to introduce these subtle effects to make it look more real to your brain actually not to your eyes but we will talk about that in render <laughs> uh, face but you can uh, i guess you can instantly see that this feels more like a used uh, sofa okay let's uh, try another example uh, another way of using this let's reset this uh, scene uh, actually i want to i don't want to lose this uh, sofa let me put that in our scene uh, this is the scene I have started for you, uh, for the final example. Let's see if... We have just started, of course. <laughs> it's not done yet. Uh, I, By mistake, I deleted the FFT one. It's, now it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, let's reset the scene. You shouldn't have seen that, but whatever. Um, okay, now I want to model something like this, for example, and I want to use FFT doing this. Uh, I'm not going to use FFT for these small details, but when I'm done, I'm going to introduce this uh, roundness with FFT. Uh, I guess you can remember the shape. It's a quite simple shape. Uh, now let's uh, create a cylinder. This will be uh, kind of like uh, the taper example. Uh, but it's, it you can't do it with taper, so I want to I wanted to show you a different way to do things like that. And let's uh, input twenty by eighty for the dimensions and hit W and uh, let's move this to the origin. Now I want to introduce some height segments. Uh, let's say thirty two, and then let's uh, add an edit poly here. Hit two, select this. Uh, loop, edge loop, and hit Alt R for uh, ring. I'm going to go to the front view and get rid of these top and bottom selections. I'm doing that with uh, holding Alt, actually. Okay, now let's extrude these uh, edges uh, inward. And let's introduce some width as well. And right away, you can see that we can create a simple, uh, the flat version uh, of the shape easily and also if uh, I, when I zoom in I see that there is a uh, flat uh, portion in here uh, I can't really see it but I can imagine it actually and in uh, in the inwards uh, portion there is a flat section as well it's not just uh, an, an edge it should be a flat face in here so uh, a shortcut for this could be chamfer uh, while these are selected uh, I'm going to hit F4 to show you that these are selected and then I'm going to uh, click on the chamfer settings. And right there, you can see that it introduces a flat face over there. I can increase this. And you can see that we can create this shape really easily in Edit Poly. I know it's weird, right? Uh, you can do a lot of things <laughs> in weird ways uh, with this program. I guess it's very creative to model as well, uh, just for this reason. Like, you need to combine a lot of different things, you know. And uh, don't worry, it will be intuitive for you as well as you model things uh, it's very interesting by the way it's i guess it's it's similar to sculpting i'm not a sculptor i don't know <laughs> about that but uh, i'm imagining i'm guessing that it is like sculpting because once you do something then you remember it uh, how to how you did it and everything else becomes a variation from that shape but whatever i'm getting ahead of myself let's go back to the subject and i'm going to input a F an fft3 this time because I just want to create a um, 
curve in here and I want uh, I don't want a flat edge in here so I will just scale this up so I'm going to hit one control points select all these points and hit R for scale and just bring them up and right away you can see that we have a shape like the like in the example of course we can add an edit poly delete the top face uh, add a shell make it inward uh, add a chamfer or whatever and then then you will be done with this but uh, you can see how I used FFT in here as well okay FFT is a very creative tool as I told you just try to think of this right away and try to create uh, more examples I want to show you two more ways of using this by the way you can animate FFT as well first let me show that to you it's very fun but uh, then I'm going to show you one more way to uh, use it. Um, then we will be done with this. I'm going to apply an FFT 2x2 two two this time. Uh, FFT 2x2 two two is very, uh, very um, handy as well because it will affect the edges. It will keep the edges straight, uh, as you can see. So uh, let's delete this. Uh, uh, sorry, add, add that again. Let's hit Ctrl Z. And you can animate this as I told you. Let's enable the auto key. Go to the hundredth frame, for example, and just move this around. And you can see that it will move accordingly. So you can create specific animations like this with FFT as well, which is very cool. If you are an animator, of course. If you are not, if you are here for modeling, just let's delete this and uh, try a new thing out. Now, last thing I want to show you is you can add uh, points to the FFT. It's not uh, limited with four by four. Uh, which is very cool as well. Let's introduce some segments to this box and let me show you what I mean. Now, if I uh, apply an FFT box, for example, you can go to set number of points and you can change the point count. Like, like let's say we need 10 by 10 points and you can see that we have a lot of control points on the object. When I hit one, I can select this and bring this up and you can edit stuff like this as well, which is very cool. Uh, but be careful about this because these points also affect these uh, areas as well so kind of be mindful about using this like if you bring these two rows up a little bit you can keep that flatness on, on there um, but it's a workaround I know uh, so this is another way to use FFT as well uh, I hope uh, you found this useful as well I use this a lot I really recommend you to experiment with this you can create very interesting stuff with FFT or you can edit uh, things really easily uh, let's let's say we have a simple chair uh, table for example I want to bring this up to 800. This 100 is a little, uh, it's a little bit high, I guess. Let's bring it back to 90. And let's create some legs for this. I also want to bring the segments down for all of these. And just set the height. And after, at this point, let's assign an FFT on top of this and just hold shift, create a copy, just rotate this, pull, put it here and hit one and just make this a little bit thinner, make this much longer. And you can just right away do this, these things with FFT. I know that you can do these uh, with uh, Edit Poly as well, but if there were segments uh, then edit poly would cost you a lot more time uh, than FFT. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you find it useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button. If you come up with any creative ways of using FFT, please share them in our Facebook group, in our Instagram account. And thanks for listening. See you in the next lesson.